welcome to our channel. I'm Angel. Jessica. This is Jessica. And uh, we're experimenting today. So let's have some fun. <laughs> let's do this. Okay. So I we're we're kind of thinking like for this first video, we're just gonna go about doing our daily routines. And for background, I guess, uh, I work for Sephora. I'm the personal beauty advisor at Robson location in Vancouver, BC. And uh, this lovely lady over here is my best friend, practically my sister. And I would say she's a novice. Oh, like <laughs> amateur is probably too kind. Oh, okay, I was being nicer apparently, but okay, here we go. So I always start off a skincare, I mean makeup routine with doing a little bit of skincare first. So if you don't prep the base, then you don't have anything smooth to work off of. So I always start with a toner on a little cotton round. This one's very hydrating. Um, I have oily skin with a lot of redness and I'm prone to eczema and breakouts. So we're just going to go all over the place. And then I always go in with a little bit of moisturizer. And I just dot that on my skin. I usually just skip the forehead because that's my oiliest part. And I just smooth. And then when I'm ready, I start to just kind of pat it in, following down to the neck. What I always do is I go in with two different primers because I'm extra at the best of times. I do this in my T-zone. So forehead. I get it all massaged in and then to finish I pat what nothing <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to do your primer because I'm not going to today oh as I normally don't oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't this was gonna not be, wear a primer <laughs> I knew this was gonna be painful for you though if I don't wear a primer my makeup's gone in two hours and as soon as I get this in rosiness hello rosiness so even though i put moisturizer on my chin i do still go in with mattifying primer because it's works for me and now primer number two and this one i use three quarters of a pump on my cheeks only and then this one i also kind of bring down the neck and then pat oh no tempted once in a while you know or just to see how it might feel what did you do i pretended to slap myself oh <laughs> really hard okay what's your next step what are you gonna do i'm gonna do concealer oh okay i'm, I'm a gonna... bit of a weirdo i always because i'm so like acne prone i always wipe down a little metal spatula i mean palette Guys, this is not the first time this is gonna happen. And then I put all my foundation on this instead of directly onto the brush or the back of my hand. What I do is I pull it out like this and work it into the bristles so everything's even. And then what I always do is I swipe in downward strokes to kind of lay down any peach fuzz. And then when I've get it, gotten it kind of dispersed it'll have a little bit of streaks in it, so then I press it into the skin. If you wanted more coverage, instead of swiping across the skin for a second layer, just press it in and skip the first part completely. You just kind of get it all in there. And I have the light on my side, so I'm Mostly getting lots yes. of glare right now. <laughs> so if you can't see it, well, we'll have to figure it out. We're learning as we go. And before anyone says oily skin makes you look younger, fuck that. <laughs> These eyes show everything. <sighs> okay, and then around my nose, my foundation never wants to sit very nice. So instead of doing the whole swiping business, I just really press it in and get into all the little, the little wee areas. And I'm one of those people 
that take my foundation kind of over my eye area as well. This will help with covering dark circles later and it helps you use a little bit less concealer. <laughs> Woo! Had to do that. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> I live for this concealer. I got her hooked on that. I used it for like seven years. Seven and years? Seven years. And I use two, cause oh. it always comes in pairs. <laughs> so what I do is I take it, this one's very peachy pinky, and I take it under my eye like so. If I were to only use this one, it's a little dark. So then I go in with this one, and this one's really, really light by itself, but it brightens this whole little cocktail up very nicely. And then I go in with my Beauty Blender for the first time. And this one's a little cheeky as opposed to the full size, which is bigger. And I just bounce that in. And I take it into the inner corner of the eye. I hold a lot of darkness there. And then I start to take it to the end of the brow. Whoop! Whoop! Uh-oh. Oh, it's so <laughs> found it. Um, it's not that I'm any less complicated here. I use a, wow, a total of six products. <laughs> Starting with this, my primer, I mix into my foundation. Start with a tiny, tiny pump of that. A tiny pump of this guy here. The Peter Thomas Roth Skin to Die For. I haven't been saying any of the names yet. Oh, we're including it in the description down below, down here. <laughs> anyway, that's what it ends up looking like on my hand before I mix it up. And I add a little bit of liquid highlight just to give me a glow. It's ever so subtle. You put too much, you sparkle a little bit in the sun. Don't do that. We're not vampires from Twilight. <sighs> we're skipping that. I just take this on any spots I didn't fully cover with my concealer. And now, my <laughs> third step, I'm gonna take a little brush. This one's small and tapered. And I just double check that I don't have any creasing. And before it can crease again, I press some of this powder in, like so. Blending the other side, like that. And now I'm gonna go in with my sponge, this little guy, and I'm just taking some of the color right on the tippy tip there. And here I press it into my inner corner and tear duct, because that's where I crease up the worst. And I really get it in there, guys. It may seem strange to do this on a dry sponge, but it just really gives you that firm pressure needed as opposed to like a little brush. And then my last step for my under eyes, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna use the same sponge, and this time I'm gonna take a really, really light foundation powder color. It's a bit more there, if you can see it. And now I'm just gonna go in and press it into the rest of my eye area, including my lid. And I've always thought, before we started to do this, <laughs> my routine was gonna be very fascinating for some people, is I go against everything that I tell my clients in store, but it works for me, so. Bad beauty advisor, bad. I don't even put primer on. Well, with, with your primer, it's fine to use as a mixing medium because it's water-based. If you had anything too mattifying or too silicone-based, you mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to mix it, so it just wouldn't work as well. I find that it just, it keeps it all very hydrated all day instead of drying out or looking like cakey. I'm gonna go on with yet another sponge. Guys, small obsession here. I got a lot of, I buy way too much product. I'm sorry, it's true, I can't help it. I have an addiction and uh, my workplace um, is my enabler, okay? For my setting powder, I actually mix two again. I know, I'm just gonna, I'm waiting for all the comments to come out. So I take a really white um, kind of HD powder and then I take a mattifying setting powder and 
I mix them 50-50 into the lid of one of them. Perfect blend. And then we take the flat side of the sponge, kind of shake off most of it just so that a little bit sticks. And I'm going to press this into my cheeks because otherwise throughout the day my pores look very enlarged here. And then I take some more on the tip of my nose and I'm pressing very firmly. It's a little uncomfortable. And then I'm going to let this sit for a bit. Mm -hmm. Beauty queens! Looking real oh. hot. <laughs> I got it all over this palette. And now I like to do brows at this stage. So for my brows, what I always do and what I do on every client so I use the spoolie end of my brow pencil and I comb the hairs as straight up as I can get them so that I can reveal the root line of the brow shape. And then what I do is I take my little pencil here and I start from the underline here and I try to get it as close to the natural root line shape as possible. And then I take it from the arch to the tail using short swift strokes. And then I comb my hair downwards so I can reveal the top root line. And I pull from the arch to meet my tail line, like so. Now if I did the same thing with the top of my brow as I do underneath, it's going to look very boxy and usually pretty artificial to each their own. And then what I do is I use the same angle that I can see my hair is growing in as a guideline to take more short swift strokes from the top of my brow and I feather everything in so that it's almost like little lines like this as opposed to like an overline. And that little bit of extra texture keeps it looking a bit more feathered and full. And then I just use my pencil to fill in. And I actually leave the front end of my brow pretty clear because I'm going to use that with my tinted brow gel instead. And then I just repeat. It's made a really loud dummy rumble. <laughs> okay, am I symmetrical? Mm, okay, a little bit more over here. My brows are extremely different. So every day is a struggle to make them look like related, let alone sisters, not twins. Okay, there, I'm satisfied. And then my last step and you're okay. You're way faster. Oh, well I just take a powder and just go in to my eyebrow where it's a little patchy. I think we were, um, well, I know for sure I was a victim of the 2000s. <sighs> I've never recovered. I had the fluffiest brows and I did not appreciate it back then. They were like Cara Delevingne and I wasted that opportunity. Victim of my generation. We all were. <sighs> why does it always have to go from skinny trends to like thick trends? Like why can't it just stay the same? And that's what my brows look like after I pull through my tinted brow gel. Is if you were to take a pencil through that front area, it can look a little bit stark and not like kind of ombre enough. So always start from the tail and work your way forward as opposed to starting from the front and working your way back. Okay, what do I look? Are we gonna do? I don't have an eye look to do. Hmm. I was just going to go in with this guy. Should I do a full eye look, guys? Or keep it simple? Tray simple. Simple pimple? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, thank you. No, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to just keep it simple. What I think I will do is I'm going to take a little bit of a light colored pigment for some little bit of shine. I'm going to take it on a fairly decently sized flat shader brush like this and I'm going to squint and I'm going to apply some of this color in my tear duct area and that's not enough for me so I'm going to take a little bit on my finger instead and I'm going to swipe it through so I'm just going it's very subtle the camera might not be able to see it so now that I've let this powder kind of sit for a little while I wouldn't call it like a true baking because it's I just don't like that term, but I guess you could. I'm just gonna take like a, kind of like a clean brush. This is the only time I use this brush. And I'm gonna flick it all off. Oh. Are you enjoying that? No. And then 
I'm gonna use another brush. This one has got a cool angle on it just to really make sure that I'm getting all that powder off because sometimes that other one, it just kind of holds on to it a little bit and I wanna just really ensure that I'm sweeping it off. Bronze time. I'm gonna take this one here. Oh, I just love the smell. And I'm gonna use a really big domed, slightly tapered brush here. And I'm gonna start back here and kind of sweep it and roll it across my cheeks. And then I'm gonna hold on to all my little baby hairs and sweep it across the perimeter of my face. And I'll always say to my clients, don't be afraid of bronzer because if you use it correctly, you can almost use it to sculpt the face very lightly without going into like a true contour routine. Because on some people, contour can be a little bit overboard and not everybody needs it. Just follow your face shape, find a bronzer that works really well for you and use a big tapered fluffy brush so that it's not too concentrated and so it doesn't look too kind of striped on. And I'm just gonna do the same thing to my other side. At work, I, I hold it a little bit farther back like this and I do a little tiny swirling circles because I'm working on somebody else. On myself, I use it a bit differently. And then I never do underneath because I, I find at least on myself because I do have no jawline. <laughs> it can look a little bit like a beard. So I skip that and I just make sure that my foundation always matches really well. I'm gonna go into blush now. I'm gonna use the coolest brush. Like look, it's pretty cool, right? I was gonna say, that is a very, very nice brush. It's a very expensive brush. Oh. Don't get attached. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this really sheer kind of rosy blush. And I like to start kind of here and I sweep it backwards into my bronzer, just taking the tiniest bit at a time because I'm not a huge blush fan. I call this the marrying stage. because you're taking two colors and combining them to be very cohesive, like a good marriage. And then my last step is I take a really simple highlighter. This is very sheer and I'm gonna use a very tapered brush and I like to take it just kind of here. I stop at the pupil and then I just take a little bit more across the bridge of my nose. Yeah, there it is. That's it for my cheeks. What do I wanna do next? I'm gonna take tiniest bit of tight line I think the littlest bit so just like a kind of like a coffee brown trying not to poke myself in the eye ah. this across my upper tie line and I'm gonna keep it at that Ooh. oh I hate that part I need a minute okay you okay I might live you might live Maybe. That'll, that'll suffice for me. You might live. I need some setting spray. Me too. Ready? Three, two, one. Holy shit, yours is loud. Oh, mine is very, very soft, guys. And I, my fan broke a long time ago, so. Aw, oh, thank you. You're welcome. I can't see anything. That's because your eyes are closed. <sighs> mine sets very quickly. So you hardly need anything, because this is like super glue for the face. If you go too much, it literally feels like you're having a like a facelift. I've tried it. So I can confirm. Did you you never give it back though if you didn't like it? I didn't say I didn't like Best. it. I used it till the very last drop. That whole thing? Yes. I Holy. also do my makeup every day, regardless of what I'm doing. Only if only for work and for you guys. <laughs> Otherwise, this baby needs to breathe. That is it, that is all for me. No, nope, we're a little spidery over here. No, we're even thicker. Oh dear. If this ever happens to you guys, I got a trick. If you ever get the spidery clump clumpy lashes, let it dry. Try not to like keep going with the same mascara wand because you're just gonna make it worse and worse and worse like I did. I have a clean spoolie that like I literally only use for these scenarios and it's got cat hair on it. When your mascara is about three quarters dry, like it come from the top, and spiral kind of through my lashes and it combs everything else nice, out nice. Oh, so that you can get rid, ooh, 
get rid of the clumpiness before it fully sets in there and then it gets just all flaky. And then if you ever get mascara smudges using a clean one or wipe it off, it'll flick right off the skin instead of smudging as opposed to using a Q-tip which would then take off your base. Let's put on a little bit of lip balm. And the ceremonial lip balm smack. I have no lip balm. <laughs> that makes no sense. Is that it? I think so. whose car that is. Oh, the back and forth and the back and forth and the back and forth? With the overly aggressive muffler system? <laughs> you guys might even get to meet mom. <laughs> <laughs> You're just <laughs> worse <than you>. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, what the thing is that I do for you guys. So sassy. You've been giving me sass. All day, from the moment I texted you I was coming over, your response was, Psh. <laughs> It's because you told me what to do. Because you told me you weren't doing anything. 